If you're planning on traveling to the Philippines, most likely you're going to spend some time here in El Nido, Palawan. So if you are here, my 20 favorite things to do here in El Palawan and everything you need to know before your visit. Okay, so Mimaropa is composed of five different places. Places. Yeah. And but you are here. But we're in Palawan. Yeah. Yeah, but I thought this whole island was called Palawan. Oh, no. oh my god. <laughs> and the city name is Puerto Princesa City. Yeah, Puerto Princesa. Okay. So Mima Mi stands for Mindoro. Oh my god. Ma for Malindoke and Ro for Blood then Oh my, god. oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I'm mind blown right now! Thank you for explaining that to me. First things first, if you're planning on getting over here to El Nido, you're most likely going to be flying into Porta Princesa Airport. Just to let you know, Porta Princesa is about five hours driving from El Nido. That is something I did not know before coming here, but luckily there are vans that'll take you from Porta Princesa Airport all the way over to El Nido. If you go to the luggage area, you'll find a tourist information desk over there, and then you could just ask if they can transport you over. And just note that there are only a couple of times a day that the van runs over to El Nido. So you most likely find a van that'll come here here around the same time you land but when I actually came over to Puerto Princesa I had absolutely nothing planned except for my flight um, I didn't have any hotel booked I didn't have a van booked all I knew was that someone I met the day before told me about the van so I just kind of winged it I'm currently at this gas station where I just bought my ticket over to El Nido it's gonna take about five hours the ticket was 700 pesos and I don't know where to stay but I'm gonna search it up while we have a long drive. Um, I don't know. <laughs> oh, the adventures. But there's about like seven people in the van right now, and I think it'll be a good drive. Oh my god, I just got to El Nido um, and I just checked into this hotel and I walked into this hotel asking them if they had spare rooms and they luckily did so I just checked in. Um, it's like 7 o'clock right now and I'm still, I feel like I'm still like traveling since we were in the van for about six hours um, also because we took like a 30 minute break to stop in the rain and everything but I did take like two naps on the van, um, yes, through all the curves and bumps and roads, but El Nido has been cool so far, just driving through the town area, it's like a really long street and there's a lot of stands and food stands and stores around, so I'm just gonna go out and walk right now. Uh, they said that the beach is about five minutes away, but honestly this hotel room is really nice. Like I really dig the bathroom. <laughs> I think I'm going to take some photos here tomorrow, but just look at this. Wow. It's like I feel like I'm in the sauna. I was planning on actually booking a hotel on the drive to El Nido, but that also didn't happen either because the Wi-Fi and the internet connection was almost non-existent. So if you're planning on YOLOing like me, don't be stressed, don't be anxious, you can do it. But I got over to a hotel about 10 minutes walking away from the main downtown area and some guy from my van actually got off to the hotel and I just walked in and I asked him if they had availability and then I ended up staying there for about three nights and then I moved on over closer to the beach area because although it is only a 10 minute walk as a girl I didn't really want to walk at night even though this town is safe so I ended up moving over to a hotel closer and actually right on the beach and I have absolutely no complaints about this hotel 
not only is the staff amazing, it's an amazing location, but they also serve you breakfast and you're right by the beach. So this morning I had a photo shoot, I ran on the beach today. So there's a lot, a lot of different options, hotels and accommodations here on the beach. So if you're just winging it like me, you'll have no problem finding a stay. So, all right, let's walk over along this beach before it possibly does rain <laughs> because it's been raining here about two times a day minimum at least so also another thing too if you're actually coming here during rainy season which is between may to september expect rainfall at least once a day but it's kind of a gamble here you just never know but so far over the last four days that i've been here it's been raining usually in the morning so about like six or seven in the morning or around sunset so about five to six p.m the other things that i did want to mention before going into the things to do here in el nido is that when you're around the town area wi-fi and data connection isn't always the best so on the beach i've actually had the most luck getting internet connection but some of the smaller streets i haven't had the best connection either luckily a lot of the cafes and the restaurants do have connection here so that's a plus but my first hotel had almost like no internet connection and it was really hard to do anything and next point before you come here just make sure that you have small money don't try to bring in like the biggest bills that you have because a lot of the places here cannot give you change and also the other thing too is that there are a lot of atms along the beach area but not every atm can give you change so actually the atm here was the first atm in the philippines where i've gotten 500 peso bills every other atm that i've gone to i haven't been able to get small money like that but try to exchange your money to small money <laughs> if you're in places like manila <laughs> or bigger cities before coming here Okay, I'm gonna face the other way because the wind is just blowing my hair. But also, if you're here during rainy season, try to bring a small umbrella or a rain jacket because, again, it rains at least once or twice a day. Luckily, I have this small little umbrella that fits actually in my fanny pack, so it hasn't been an issue. But you, again, you just never know. And the good thing is that if it does rain during the day, it doesn't rain for more than an hour and it stops. So that's good. But there has been times where it's rained and then an hour later it will rain again. So just know that. Now for the fun part, what to do here in El Nido. So from my last few days here, I've come up with 20 things to do here in El Nido. And the first one is obviously what I'm doing right now, but take a walk along the beach. I know that might sound basic and obvious to you, but really take the time to really just walk along the entire beach. It's really really beautiful and you'll be able to find and discover a lot of little small shops and stores and hotels and maybe even viewpoints that are not found commonly on the internet so this morning i actually went out for a run and i ran from one part of el nido beach to the other and i'm like oh my gosh i've been here for a couple of days and i've never seen this part of the beach and i didn't know this existed so try to really take the time to get to know the beach bringing me to my next point and the first thing that you've probably done the moment you got over to el nido is to take all the photos in the world if you are visiting during rainy season take your chances and take your photos when you can because you never know when it's gonna rain again. It is just so beautiful. Like all the low fog and the clouds above the mountains over here, ugh. I literally have no complaints whatsoever. So, so beautiful. When I first came to El Nido, I wasn't really totally impressed i'm going to be honest with that but i think that's also because i came at night i was so tired i had nothing planned it was raining almost every day and i didn't really actually properly explore but when i moved hotels and i actually walked around the area i've really fallen in love with this place el nido has really grown on me and i'm actually really sad to leave in a couple of days but i initially was planning on staying here for only three days and now i'm staying here for a week so if you're also planning on visiting 
you need at least one week minimum. No matter what you do, do not miss out on going on tours. Do not miss out on island hopping because that is what El Nido is really known for. When you're here, there's gonna be a lot, a lot of tour companies around the downtown area and you'll find four different tours. You'll find tour A, tour B, tour C, and tour D. If you've been researching and reading online, tours A and C are the most popular. I mean, granted, the islands that they go on are freaking beautiful. If you have enough time, I would recommend going on all the tours. If I had enough time here, I would honestly go on every single tour. There's so many, I think there are 35 smaller little islands that surround El Nido. The lowest cost for a tour is 1,200 pesos, and the most expensive is 1,400 pesos, and obviously tour C, which is the most popular one, and the one that's been getting canceled every single day since I've been here is the $1,400 pesos. The reason why the tour C has been getting canceled is because every single morning the Coast Guard informs the entire town if you're able to go on certain islands or not for your safety and over the last three days because it is rainy season um, they were saying how it's not entirely safe right now to go on tour C so tomorrow is my last day where I could potentially go on this tour so we'll see if I actually go on but also note that when you are going on these tours that you're gonna have to pay for a lot of things so if you're planning on snorkeling there's a snorkeling fee if you're planning on renting out water shoes you got to pay for water shoes if you're planning on renting a kayak that's about 200 pesos in the blue lagoon so there's a lot of fees and there's also an entrance and environmental fee as well and you pay that once even though the cost of the actual tour itself might be 12 or 1400 dollars expect to pay at least another 400 pesos more for all of the other rental fees. I went on my tours with Hello El Nido and they took amazing care of me and they also have a laundromat here in downtown El Nido as well. So if you need to do your laundry after your tour, I would just go there. And there's a huge sign in the middle of downtown, you can't miss it. So you wanna note that when you're going on these tours, you will also probably want to buy a dry bag as well and a waterproof phone case. So all around the town, you'll find people selling them. If you're bringing a phone, important valuable as a camera, I highly recommend you buying one of these dry bags for your safety. Hi! Alright, we're all going on tour A and we got super lucky because we are on a private boat, but this is not a private tour! <laughs> so that leads me to my next point. Yes, all of these islands are amazing and they're beautiful, but if you're here in El Nido for just a limited amount of time, you want to go visit the most popular and one of the most beautiful, the Big Lagoon. So yes, the Big Lagoon is really worth the hype and it is really worth it if you have a drone. So when I went, we got really, really lucky that it didn't rain at all and there was a little like orange platform area in the middle of the water and I just kayaked there by myself threw up the drone and I got my footage so bring a drone if you can but take your pictures there as well it is really worth it and beautiful and that is under tour a so the town actually kind of does it really smart well they'll break up the most popular places in different type of tours number five you want to go to Las Cabanas Beach to see sunset and yes, although that it's been raining here during sunset every single day, it only rains for about like an hour max. When I actually went over to Las Cabanas Beach, the moment I got there, it started raining. Wow, the rain here is so quick. I just got to Las Cabanas Beach and I wanted to shoot sunset here, but the moment I got here, it started to rain. So then I just went back to call my tricycle driver again to drive him back to my hotel. But I waited like, it couldn't have been more than 15 minutes and now the rain stopped that was so fast and i still have about five minutes i see color in the sky to take photos of sunset i was so excited <laughs> Another beach that I highly do recommend going on is the Seven Commandos Beach. And that is actually under Tour A as well. It was just like a nice relaxing area there too. So all of the tours, they actually end up the tours there. And then everyone kind of just like chills, relaxes, plays volleyball, and it's really a nice time. But don't be like me and just bring one drone battery because I only had like five minutes to fly my drone before I came back down. When you're 
walking outside of the downtown area, you might get to the beach and go like, okay, should I turn left or should I turn right? So when I first got here, I actually turned right and the right side has a lot of bars and restaurants. So if you want to drink, spend the night, I would recommend going to the right side. If you're feeling really spontaneous on your first night like me, you can come over to the Tribute Curitas bar. So I actually got a tattoo my first night here. It was the most spontaneous thing that I've done. Oh my god, I'm getting a tattoo! <laughs> this is really YOLO! But if you're not so spontaneous like me, you can opt in for a henna tattoo. Alrighty, next, when you're here, I highly recommend you taking the time to walk around the town area. And yes, it is small town area where you can walk everywhere in less than five minutes or if you're taking your time more than five minutes but when i actually first got here i only walked around result street and i didn't really know that the smaller streets had a lot of things so for the first couple of days i was only walking on Rizal and when I moved hotels I was like oh my gosh this place existed I had no idea when you're here you're also going to be asked a lot to ride tricycles if you're not familiar with a motorbike yes you do want to take the tricycles here and they're not too expensive either thank you you know for picking me up whenever I texted you thank you Bye. <laughs> you also find a lot of places renting out motorbikes as well and they're relatively cheap you'll find them for about 400 pesos per day um, and I think there's a lot of supply here because in almost every other corner I've seen tour companies and motorbike rental companies because there are so many motorbike companies and motorbikes around the area if you know how to ride one I would highly recommend renting out a motorbike and driving around the island, the beaches, and explore more of the area. Look, and just here, there's so many. But if you're within the downtown area, you don't really need to take a tricycle anywhere if you're okay to walk. Nothing is more than 10 minutes. Walking 10 minutes will take you all the way up to the El Nido Public Market. So this market is outside of the downtown area, but you'll find some of the freshest Fruit. They sell everything from dragon fruit to mangoes, literally some of the best mangoes I've had in my life. Watermelons, all the fruits that you can really find out here. As you're heading over to the beach, the last right exit before the beach, there's a street. I don't know what the street is actually called on Google Maps. It's C.Hama. But here is where you'll find a lot of stores, restaurants, a lot of Western food out here. So this street, again, I had no idea this existed until yesterday or two days ago. But this has been one of my favorite streets here in El Nido. This is also where you'll go bar hopping if you're planning on going bar hopping. So to my next point, the other thing you want to do here in El Nido is to go bar hopping and you're probably familiar with Saba, a beach bar that I actually haven't gone to because I've just had no energy to want to socialize and drink. But maybe I'll walk in right now. Hey. Are you open? Are you open? Uh, we're open at 4 p.m. 4 p.m. All right, guys, 4 p.m. And then what time do you close? Just every 2 a.m. 2 a.m. Yeah. And this is the most popular bar yeah, it's here. It's the most popular bar here, man. Yeah. Every night's party here. Party East. Party East. Right. Party. Yeah. Every night's party. Ah, oh, okay. Like only on the weekend or just? Or it's every night. Every day. Yeah. Every every night. Okay. Every night we have DJ. DJ. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I have to come here tonight. Okay. See you later, Thank you. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll come here later tonight. I haven't come here yet. So, I don't know. Honestly, ever since I started traveling, I've just been getting really, really tired and I haven't been going out and drinking out as much as I used to. All of my drinking energy has correlated over to my travel energy. <laughs> this is another one that I don't know if I can recommend because I haven't done it yet, but if you want to, you could rent out a kayak here and go kayaking. On tour A, I did go kayaking, so I did that. But if you're feeling more watery and adventurous, you can rent out a kayak here as well. If you've been traveling in Southeast Asia for quite some time, you'll notice that in every country, you'll find a lot of massage places. And the other day, I actually opted in for a massage instead of going out to the bars. But the massages here are 
so far, the one that I got was really good. They will cost you on average 500 to 600 pesos. And then after your massage right across the street, there is ice cream. So I actually haven't found a lot of ice cream stores here in Philippines. So when I saw that this one was here, it's homemade ice cream. I was like, I have to go. So I got one and actually I asked to use the bathroom and then they told me to go upstairs. And when I went upstairs, it was a bar. So this is ice cream plus bar. Hey, what's up? <laughs> Thank you. I try jam. Can I try the pineapple ginger rum? This one sounds interesting. I've been having a lot of pineapple here in El Nido and I love ginger, so that almost sounds like the perfect mix. Thank you. It smells, it smells like pineapple. Oh, this is really good. And do you just put this on like bread? Sorry, man. Do you just put this on bread or something? No. no? What do you usually put this in? Actually, mommy did bread. And also bread is possible that one. Oh, bread is possible. Yes. This is really good. Do you also use this for tea or no? Yes. You do? Yes. Can I get the pineapple ginger, please? Yeah. 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 A small one is okay. Yeah, thank you. This is really good. I need to get it. Huh? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Salamapo. Alrighty. I'm so happy I got this. Oh my gosh. All right, the other thing too, again, when I travel, it's actually kind of hard sometimes because there's a lot of times where I want to buy things, but because I have such limited space in my luggage, I have to control myself and what I buy. But I told myself that whatever the last country is, that I'm gonna go crazy. If you're walking the block right next to the beach, it's also a one way. So if you're walking on the actual street itself and you don't want to get hit by a car you don't have to worry about the other way it's really a one-way street here and then that intersection right there it splits off if you're planning on visiting el nido and let's just say that you need to work and you just need good wi-fi there are a couple of cafes and restaurants along Rizal street that'll have good wi-fi my favorite one that I've been going to is called Taste Cafe and they have amazing, amazing acai bowls, good Wi-Fi, really friendly staff and it's kind of in the center of everything. I actually had an acai bowl today earlier before I made this video so I'm gonna go in and say hi to them. Okay, and this is the interior of Taste. They also have an upstairs seating area and I was sitting right there to do work. Hi! <laughs> I know, I just want to uh, say that you guys have really good acai bowls. Thank you so much. No, really. And good Wi-Fi too. <laughs> yeah, well maybe I'll be back again. <laughs> Bye! Bye! <laughs> Alright. So yes, and the other good thing too is that they close at 9 p.m. Well, the cafe closes at 9 p.m. And then if you cross the street, you'll head over to the infamous El Nido Bakery. Here is where you'll also find the infamous Panda Coco. I came earlier today, but they started making them at 2. Hi. Do you guys have the Panda Coco? Yeah! <laughs> Alright, so... What, what exactly is Panda Coco? Because I had it the other day, it was really good, but I don't remember what is inside. Um, coconut. Coconut. Fuko. Yes. Fuko. And you guys make it fresh every day. Fresh every day. So all the pastries and the bread that they have here, it's freshly made every single morning. Okay, I will take one. Yes. Only one. <laughs> Should I get more? <laughs> Should I get two? The egg tart was really good too. I'll take two of these. Usually, what time do they run out? Usually, what time do they run out? Do they... What time? And then, what time do you usually finish? So, all of this is gone in two hours? 
two hours. So if you're here, come between two and four and cross your fingers, you'll be lucky and get yourself a candy cone. Ooh, they just made more. So I got two, but each of them only costs 15 pesos. Mm. So inside is coconut. Shaved coconut, Google. Oh, and it's so fresh. Mm. Oh, good. Originally, when I said I only wanted one, the girl laughed and was like, only one? What else? So I ended up getting two. But it's because I know that I'll eat everything. I'm trying to self control how much I eat. But I'll probably eat it all. It's really good. So I'll need a bakery. Must. And again, since the town is really small, you'll kind of find a lot of these places just right next to each other. And it's super close. Walking distance. The next popular thing that you want to do is come over here to the Academy Walk. The entrance fee is 30 pesos, but the ticket price is 400 pesos. And there are two different options. You got the dream catcher and the regular canopy walk. And the just the canopy walk itself is 400. How much is a dream catcher? Fame? But together, how much? 730. Okay, so if you do both together, 730. But they're just two different walks and I just paid for the regular canopy walk and that's gonna take about half an hour or so. So I think I'm the only am I the only one? No, yeah. I think someone's waiting for me. Oh yay! Okay, okay. Alright, so let me put this on. <laughs> I gotta put these harnesses on so you don't fall. Into the canopy walk we go. This is the start of the walk. This is a little bit of a hike up. Five minutes to the top? Yeah. Five minutes. Ten, ten, ten. Ten. ten minutes. All right, we got this. Oh, metal. Whoa! Whoa, canopy walk. Yeah! <laughs> oh my gosh. Whoa, it's a little bit wobbly. Be careful when you're here. Oh my god! It's like, what do I hold on to the railing or? It just uh, oh, okay, okay. okay. Cool. So we're going up there. Holy! I scared of heights. Don't worry, the railing's got you. Wow, these are limestone. Apparently, these limestone rocks grow. One centimeter every year? Yes. And these holes are actually raindrops. But because it rains here so often, you said it brings uh, it down? Yeah. yeah. Brings it down. But so wait, so are all these mountains made out of limestone? Yes, ma'am. Oh my god! All of them! Limestone! So cool. <laughs> yes. Cool. We made it to the top of the canopy walk. Are absolutely stunning. Why do you need a drone when you come can you come up to the canopy walk? So this mountain is the tallest mountain in El Nido and with one of the tours you can actually get over to the beach. Which tour is that? Do you know? Well, San Degan Beach. <laughs> San Degan Beach? Yeah. Super nice. I can just stay here all day. But unfortunately they close at four. You guys close at four o'clock. So I just caught it in time. I think they made that stand for the tour guys to take photos. <laughs> How smart. So Mark actually grew up here in El Nido and I asked him how long the building's been here for. So last 10 years you said? Last 10 years they just started developing but he was saying that there were mainly cottages and palm trees here and now you can't really see a lot of palm trees. Now it's just a lot of buildings. Local people still live on the beach or they live elsewhere now? They also live on the beach. Is it because they got kicked out or they no, want to? They want to. They, they don't like the yeah. tourists? Yeah. I don't they like the tourists, but they... Quiet. Yeah, like that. Quiet. quiet. Wow. So El Nido, really, the town area has been here for not even 10 years. Yeah. Not, yeah. Crazy. Wow. And it's really just right next to all the most beautiful islands here in the Philippines. Wow. We are the last ones here. It's currently 420, waiting for golden hour, which is probably not going to happen. But 
So one thing that I was going to recommend to do in El Nido is to hike Taro Cliff. But since April 26, 2022, they were closed. And it's really unfortunate, especially for the tour guide. So Mark actually was tour guide for the Taro Cliff, but it's closed. Why? Uh, there's a lot of reasons. It's no safety gear. Nothing is very dangerous to as long as you didn't have a pair of bikes, you can do it. Well, so safety gear, that's really important because apparently there were a lot of accidents yeah. that happened up there. But there is also the El Nido bird that lives on top of yeah. the cliff. Yes. And that's actually where El Nido got its name from. So El Nido in Spanish means nest. Yes. Oh my god! So guys, if you're curious as to how El Nido got its name, it's because of that bird. And behind all of these mountains, there are actually caves with El Nido birds. And they just want to, I guess, preserve the nature and the animals. So hence why it's closed. But there's also another airport here called Swift Air Swift Airport because those birds are called Swift Lit Birds. Mind blown! So if you guys are wondering, that is why. Somewhere over there. I think it's like less than five kilometers away because, yeah, because I couldn't fly my drone. <laughs> but that's why. Wow, we just had an entire history lesson of El Nido. What I also find cool is that this town area, it's only been pretty active with visitors for only 13 years. It was rated the number one city to visit across the seven wonders of the world. And I guess that's good and bad for the local people here. I think Mark finds it both good and bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For obvious reasons, I think you guys may or may not know, but in the next five years, I could only, only imagine El Nido being two times more busier than it is right now. And I came maybe like three months after it opened it back up after the pandemic, and there's still a good amount of tourists out here, but I can just imagine what it's like in the next five years. But it's crazy to see kind of like a bird's eye view, an El Nido eye view <laughs> over here to see how many boats that there are. There's so many. I feel like when you're down there on the beach, you don't realize how many boats are here, but when you're up here, you can see really everything. It's like a panoramic view. So guys, if you guys are visiting El Nido, you have to come to the canopy walk. Really, I'm loving this. This is totally worth it. <laughs> So if you have rented a motorbike, you're probably gonna want to make your way over to Nakban Beach. So Earl graciously offered me, hey guys. offered to drive me over to Nakban Beach, and he actually works at one of the restaurants along the beach in El Nido Beach. And he was like, "Have you gone to Nakban?" I was like, "No." And he was like, "I'll take you there." So he graciously picked me up at. He came at like 4:50 in the morning. I woke up at 4.40 guys, um, but he drove here. It takes about 40 minutes to get here. So yeah, it's a really beautiful beach. We're on the back side of the beach and we're about to head over to the front. But if you just want to get away from Belinda Beach or explore more of the area, honestly, this is the beach to come to. And if you have a drone, come with a drone because it is absolutely stunning from above. If you're heading your way back down to El Nido Beach from Nakpan Beach, you might want to stop over at Leo Beach. I think the stores are still opening up, but there's a lot, a lot of cute little cheek stores and restaurants over here. The beach is really nice so far. I mean, like all the stores and restaurants, you have all the trees out here. I kind of wish they were open so I could sit down and eat at one of the restaurants, but for now, we're just gonna walk around onto the beach and see what else is here. Overall, guys, these were my 20 things to do here in El Nido and all of my travel tips that I've kind of gathered during my couple of days that I've been here so far. So guys, thank you guys so much for your support. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and I hope this video helped on planning your trip a little bit better. And if you guys haven't, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and hit that notification bell if you haven't done so already. I'll see you guys in the next video and always remember safe and happy travels. Oh my gosh, I haven't seen one of these poses so long. But apparently they use this to call over to the market. Can I turn this on? Ah!